Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into something that should make any home lab enthusiast heart race, running large language models locally and scaling them across your own hardware. Most of you won't need any new hardware for this. You might not realize you're sitting on some really seriously powerful hardware that you use every day. We've all seen how powerful AI models such as ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, and DeepSeek can be, but relying on cloud services often means latency, a consistent internet connection, and most importantly, privacy concerns. You do know, using free versions of all of these cloud services, your conversations are all being used for training data, right? every word. Don't kid yourself thinking they give away these powerful and incredibly expensive services out of the goodness of their heart. You are their product. So what if you could bring all of that AI horsepower entirely in-house? That's exactly where Olama comes in. This is a local service for large language models, capable of unlocking the power in the computer you likely already own, giving you choices in which models to use and choose to force them to run completely offline. You may already know about Olama, and no, I'm not here today showing you how to install a really simple software package. We'll do that briefly, but what we're really here for today is to cluster multiple different systems to drive your own private AI powerhouse. Let's dive in. Olama is like Docker for LLMs, only simpler. Install it once and you can pull down model files directly to your computer. These models are huge, sometimes dozens of gigabytes. So having them local means faster inference and no data leaving your network. Plus, in the case of Apple's M series chips with metal acceleration, make running them surprisingly efficient, leveraging their incredibly powerful on-chip GPU architecture to power complex models. The big wins? Privacy, because your prompts and data stay local. Speed, since there's no round trip to an internet-based service. And offline capability, perfect for labs without an always-on internet connection. Are you missing your favorite chatbot while you're on a long flight? Now, before you run off and pull down some monster LLM model, you might want to understand the capabilities of your machine and what is the best suited model to run for you, what you're using it for to get the best possible experience. We'll get into the nuances of that a bit later, but let's get the core of our cluster set up first. One model is great, but if you have multiple Macs or just want to run several models, you'll quickly hit resource limits. By the way, you're not at all limited to Apple Silicon Macs here. You can run a Llama on just about any Windows or Linux computer as well. You can even run it on a Raspberry Pi, a Rock Pi, or Orange Pi. You remember my 3D printed ARM SBC cluster? Wait, you didn't watch that video yet? You've gotta go check that out. I'll wait. Cool, right? Hey, it's not the best suited thing for something as specific as LLMs, but it does work with smaller models like Tiny Llama. Moving on, whatever systems you've managed to install Olama on, we're here to cluster them all together. Instead of juggling processes manually, this is where our wonderful Docker package called Open Web UI comes in. Think of it as a cluster manager for your local AI setup providing a friendly web interface that orchestrates your Olama instances across multiple machines, including multiple logins, users with their own workspace, chat history, prompt configurations, even the ability to control which users have access to which models. Maybe you don't want everyone who you're giving access to chew up resources in your cluster with some really, really big models that you're still testing. You can easily restrict access so everyone can use it at the same time without bogging everything down. Installing Open Web UI is simple. If you're already a seasoned Docker user, go ahead and deploy it to your liking. My personal preference is to deploy it to that ARM SBC cluster we've been talking about using Docker Swarm, which will ensure it always runs somewhere in the cluster. And its web interface is presented with HTTPS and a real SSL cert using traffic reverse proxy. I've got a good video linked here to get you started and up to speed. Uh, if you need any help getting up and running with traffic. I think it's time well spent. And link in the description below to get my sample Docker Compose file, which will get you started quickly. Once you have Open Web UI up and running, let's take a quick tour. Each computer with a Llama installed on it becomes a worker node. You can assign big models to your beefier systems for heavier lifting, while smaller models running on secondary machines for continuous tasks and general AI chatbot activities can run on slower systems. Before we get started, as a reminder, each of your Olama installs will need to have the option enabled to expose Olama to the network so you can send from Open Web UI. Here it is in the Mac OS version under the main settings menu. And while you're in here, you can decide if you want to enable airplane mode, which will force the models to stay completely in-house offline. I recommend setting this as the default setting, 
That's the whole reason we're setting up our LLMs locally, right? With the trade-off here being that it will prevent some of the really powerful models with deep learning capabilities from doing internet searches for you. When we navigate to the admin panel, first you'll see the users and group section. Since we set the initial Docker deployment with the environment variable set to web UI auth equals false, the first step will be to configure our admin user account here with a known email address. Uh, it doesn't need to be a real email address or anything. It's just your login. That's just how they format the username and make sure you set a password. You can add other users here while you're at it if you like. Before we get any further and forget, let's go back to our Docker Compose file, set web UI auth equals true and redeploy open UI. When the web interface comes back up, you'll be presented with a login screen. Use the email address and password you said earlier and you're back in. All right, back to the admin panel. Under your user icon in the top right, let's go to settings. On the general tab here, there's a ton of settings here, letting you use this in many different ways. I'll leave you to explore that on your own. Let's go into the connection section. Here's where the magic is. You're gonna to wanna to add in the systems that you deployed a Llama to. Hit the plus icon and simple formatting here, just prefix with HTTP colon slash slash the IP address or resolvable DNS name of that system and then colon 11434, that's the default Olama port. If you have trouble reaching any of your systems here, you'll need to ensure you have a clear path from where Open Web UI is running to that endpoint. Uh, hit me up in the comments if you need some help there. On each of the managed Olama servers you've configured, you can now manage that instance completely from here. Nice. If you click this little download icon, this is where you can add and delete models from that node. More on that a little bit later. The gear icon, this is where you can manage the node itself and delete it if you need to. Another good way to manage models across your nodes is directly under the models menu, where you can enable and disable models, set them to public or private, which defines whether or not they're generally available to all users or if they're restricted to a group. You can define capabilities of that particular model, default prompt behavior, and if you really want to get into the weeds, show the advanced parameters and tune the model very precisely. With this setup, you now have a powerful offline self-hosted AI cluster fully under your control. Let's talk a bit about choosing which model to run to meet your needs and match the hardware you're running. Remember, you can run many models on each node and they don't all need to match precisely across all of the nodes. For example, on a modern Apple Silicon Mac, you can run some large and complex models for heavy research tasks, taking advantage of that tightly coupled unified memory and GPU architectures. While on the other end of the scale, an ARM-based SBC such as Raspberry Pi or Rock Series systems like in my lab cluster, we have memory constraints and no access to the on-chip GPU. So you rely on CPU only inference. Those are really only practical with extremely lightweight models like Tiny Llama. Throw a complex question at that and you'll quickly see where its limitations are. Let's look at the large list of models freely available to download on the model section of the Llama website. As you scroll through, you can look at the models to learn more about them, how big they are, what they're tuned to do, and so on. Let's take two easy examples. On the higher end, I like this DeepSeq R1 7B model. This one has really good deep reasoning capability and on a modern Apple Silicon computer, performs really well with complex queries. If you're just learning about LLMs, an important note is that figure after the colon in the name, 7B. This means the model was trained on 7 billion parameters. That's pretty big, but scroll down a little bit, there's much larger ones. Even just within this model family, check it out. There's a massive 400 gig model. Yes, that's actual download size of the model is 671 billion parameters, whoa. Yeah, unless you happen to be sitting on a system with at least 512 gigs of RAM, don't even think about downloading that. It's a waste of time. Remember, the whole model has to be loaded into memory. Back on the smaller end, the choice I like for underpowered systems is Tiny Llama. Sitting at just over 600 megabytes, this is a very approachable model for most systems and a good starting point for small SBCs. To load a model, we just grab the name and the tag of the model. Just hit the copy icon. Under models, click the download icon in the upper right. Choose the Olama node you want to deploy it to and click download. This is super convenient. You don't need to actually go touch any nodes or anything to manage the models on them. Nice. With Olama and Open Web UI, your home lab can go from a single AI workstation to a full local inference cluster. No cloud costs, no privacy worries, and blazing speed. This is a game changer in your AI journey. Check out the links below for full setup guides, including system requirements, model sourcing, and security tips. 
And let me know in the comments how you're gonna use your local AI cluster. So where do we go from here? That's the all important question. Next, we're gonna hook this all into Home Assistant. If you've been following Home Assistant's evolution and their AI journey, you've probably realized that they've developed a Home Assistant cloud-based LLM as well. Now, in keeping with our desire to have everything run locally and under our own control, we're gonna replace that with Olama large language model. Now that part is simple. There's a simple integration in Home Assistant to wire in Olama, no problem there. That'll let you both integrate a basic chatbot into Home Assistant directly, and also let you control specific entities in Home Assistant from your large language model. We're also gonna do the reverse. You can hook open web UI into Home Assistant so that in line, in your nice open web UI browser-based AI interactions, you can also control parts of Home Assistant from there, right in line. You don't even have to go over to Home Assistant. So that opens up a lot of other interesting possibilities as well. Also wanna show you real quick here, just a, a quick teaser of something I've been working on in the background that I'm really excited to share with you guys. I wanted to find an interesting way to visually represent all that GPU horsepower power that is powering your LLM and how you can see like when it's working and thinking. So here's a quick glance of what I came up with. I just want to share this with you. This ties into another project based around WLED and lets you kind of see when your AI is working really hard under the hood and when it kind of goes back down to idle. We're going to break into that. That's a whole separate video. I'm super excited to share that with you. That's coming up in the next couple of weeks here. And then last but not least, we're also going to spend a lot more time diving deep into these models themselves, doing some tuning, exploring which ones are really the best use case for certain types of workloads. So we'll step into that. That's a whole separate video on its own. So look forward to that as well. Make sure you hit that notification bell so that you see that one when it comes in. If you found this helpful for you, please hit like, consider subscribing for more content like this. And I look forward to chatting with you in the comments below. Thanks everyone. I'll see you next time.